So guys, I'm so very excited to introduce you to a wonderful man and his name is Super Mario, the Million Moves Man. Hello, hi guys, how are you? Can we talk in German? If you want, I'll listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 okay. Um, tell me, um, we know each other since a few years, but I don't know your age. Really? You want me to go public with this? <laughs> Let's just say I was born in 1972. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. You? 79. But you, you look much younger than I do. Oh, come on, you can't compare that, you know. Oh. You're cute in your own size, I'm cute in my own size. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how long are you teaching? Or no, 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 how long are you dancing for? Uh, I started uh, salsa July 7th, 1998. 1998, okay, all right. I started dancing 1987. See? You got you got wow. ten years over me. <laughs> but not not in salsa. No. And and why why did you or why did you love salsa so much? So what's the what what happened? So my friend dragged me to a salsa club. I've never danced in my life, and when I was starting salsa, I was sixty one kilos bigger. I was huge. Wow. Okay. Very big. Okay. So salsa was the only place in a, in a salsa club was the only place where people never judged me. Okay. So nobody cared about my size, my color, my height, my weight. So I felt very comfortable there. And um, when I went there, it was a place where I forgot everything, you know. In life, I was studying and people were bullying me and all that kind of stuff was happening. But when I went to a salsa club, I never felt all this um, bad attention, you know. Yeah. So I felt it was my kingdom. So I, I really loved going to this place. Yeah. Not just to learn dancing. But also to see people, the community, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was nice. It was nice, comfortable, yeah. And how long did that change you, or how long did it take to really change your inner? One day. Oh, really? <laughs> I fell in love straight away. I just knew this was my place, yeah. Okay. And uh, fortunately, there's a story to this, if you don't mind me telling yeah, you the story. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, like I said, I never danced in my life. And, I, and that day was a day a girl broke my heart. And my best friend decided to take me to a salsa party because it was a Monday night. And uh, when we went there, he was asking me questions about what happened. And then the lady, one lady walked by and she said, uh, oh, you guys are new here, you know? And she did this. She goes, oh, don't worry, salsa is beautiful, you know? She looked at me and she said, uh, did a girl break your heart? I said, what? She said, oh, don't worry, salsa will be good for you. And... So immediately there was a connection in this place and she was a teacher of the class. Oh, okay. And she was teaching us steps. I've never danced in my life before. So I got everything wrong. <laughs> and then she was telling everybody, hey guys, do what this big guy is doing. He's going to be so good, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what the hell is it? But one hour, I forgot about this girl who broke my heart. Okay. Oh. And then after the class, this lady came to me and she said like, uh, what's your name? I said, my name is Mario. And she said, ah, oh, Mario, you know what? You're going to be an amazing dancer. From now, don't pay to come to classes. Wow. So the first class, my friend paid. After that, I never paid. So it was an, it was an additional motivation for me, you know, to mm -hmm. go there. I felt good. I didn't have money at that time. So teaching, wow, you know, it was it just, it just awesome. she, she is somebody I will never forget in my life. Her name is Ellie Galvani. Mm -hmm. And she is somebody who really, I will always be thankful and was it in London? Or? Yeah, it was in London, yeah, yeah. Did you grow up there? Grow up there? Yes, I was. No, I, I came to London when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So, but since then I've been in London, yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, but then it just, you know, so I was never feeling pressure to move to levels and classes. So I stayed in one class, I learned it everything properly because mm -hmm. I didn't have the financial problem. Okay. So I was learning very slowly. I learned everything very, very nicely, properly, and then when I felt right, I moved to the next class. But yeah. But then you finished uh, school and then you went to study. No, maths. it was on my last year of university when I started salsa. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. But what made you like shift your plan so to teach? I started in July and then my my courses finished in September. Mm -hmm. So it was my last six months of my university when I was doing salsa. Mm -hmm. After I finished my degree, I passed all my classes. I had to work, of course, because I didn't know salsa at that point was going to do anything for me. And then um, I remember there was a metro strike, a tube strike, mm -hmm. 
So nobody could, the teachers for the class couldn't come to class. I was just learning salsa for about six months at this point. Mm-hmm. And then she asked me like, Mario, can you teach a class for me? You know, it was a beginner class. And I said, she's my teacher, of course, you know, yeah. and I would do anything for her because mm-hmm. I never paid and I thought this would be a good chance to repay her. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, yeah, sure. Oh my God, I remember this class like it was yesterday. <laughs> they, the people loved it, I loved it, we all loved it. They wanted me to teach them more. Then she asked me, like, do you want to teach? And I said, like, no, I don't know anything about it. She said, no, you can teach one class and um, take another class, you know? Mm-hmm. I said, okay. So it was just for fun we did it. And then at that point in my life, I wasn't ready to work yet. I don't know why. I just didn't feel. I went for interviews. Mm-hmm. I passed my interviews, but I wasn't feeling like I wanted to start going to an office and wearing a suit and tie. Yeah. And then my friend told me, like, he's like, oh, why don't you just try teaching salsa for six months? If it works, it's great. If it doesn't, go back to work. Yeah. So I said, okay. So I took a chance in uh, 2000, the year 2000. I said, let me teach more, you know. And at this point, I've been learning for about a year and a half. And then I started teaching and I just picked up from just there. When, uh, wow. That's good. And <laughs> since when did you go to all these um, huge congresses? So the story about congresses is um, in the year 2000, April, the world's second congress happened. The first one was in Puerto Rico in 1999. Mm -hmm. And then in 1999, they did one in Los Angeles. So then in 2000, they decided to do a reunion of the two festivals in Toronto. Mm -hmm. At this point, my friend was like, hey, Mario, let's go to a salsa festival. I'm like, what is that? They're like, Oh, it's a place where people come from different countries and they dance. And I said, really? Are we ready for this? Said, yeah, let's go. There was no internet. Remember, there's no internet, no DVDs, no nothing online, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was working, I remember I was working in KFC at that time. So we decided to go in April. So I started working from December without taking a day off. I started collecting money. Yeah. I had a passport. I had to get a visa. So I collected everything and I went to this festival. So me and five girls. Mm-hmm. So there were six of us. So we had no money. So we stayed in one, we took one room. So we all had to stay in one room. I bought my pass, my flight, my visa. It was so exciting. And then the Thursday night, the party, I remember so well. Everybody, all those superstars, like at that time, you know, mm-hmm. they were doing their shows. And I saw so many people from so many different countries, you know, and I was like, my mind just blew out. So I just did what I did, which was dance, you know. Mm-hmm. And then Thursday and Friday, I was dancing. People were asking me to dance. It was such a beautiful and amazing uh, feeling, feeling, atmosphere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then on Saturday night, an or- the organizer came to me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he was like, oh, what's your name? I said, Mario. He's like, oh, you're the guy everyone's talking about from London, the guy with the moves, you know? And I said, oh, yeah, it's me. He's like, oh, can you do me a favor? I said, what? He's like, oh, tomorrow we have a class. The teacher's not coming. Can you teach a class for me? Uh-huh. And I said... What? All these coincidences. Oh my God, it was wow. just a ridiculous story. And then I was like, are you sure? He's like, don't worry, I'll give you back the money for your flight, your hotel, your whatever. I said, okay, I'll teach a class. And I was so nervous. Hmm. Because on Friday, Saturday, I was taking classes with all these people. I was a participant at that point. Yeah. On Sunday, I'm on top of a stage with these people looking at me, you know. Uh, really, I was so nervous because everybody was watching me. Eddie Torres was watching Angel Rodriguez, Ismael Otero, all these guys. I was looking and watching their shows. They were all watching me. But it was just your perspective. What did they say after that? I, mean, I didn't know did these well? people. I didn't know these people. But Eddie Torres? I didn't know them. I oh, just know okay. them as people. Yeah, okay, okay. Because in Europe, we didn't know who Eddie Torres was. Yeah, okay. You know, they were just people we took classes with. Yeah. So we took classes with all these people and they were all watching me, yeah. wondering who this new guy is. But how did it go then? For me, very nervous, very nerve-wracking. I was literally right. shaking, you know? <laughs> yeah. And my dance partner said, you know, why are you shaking? I said, everyone's watching me. So she said, just turn around. So she put my back to her and everything changed. I didn't see them, so everything was okay. Uh-huh. But I had like 500 people in this class, over oh. five. Because we only had two rooms, room A, room B. Oh, yeah. I was in room A with five, 600 people. Room B had five, six hundred people, you know, mm-hmm. and but then after the class finished, uh, some lady came to me. She's like, "Oh my God, who are you? What's your name? You know, where are you from?" I said, "I'm from London." She said, "Oh, do you have a business card?" I said, "No, I don't." She said, "Can I have your email address?" So I wrote it down to her. And uh, in two thousand and one, Europe's first festival happened in Holland, mm-hmm. in Harlem. 
Mm-hmm. This lady's name was Anacha, and she wrote me. Okay. And she said, like, hey, I saw you in Toronto. Do you want to come teach at my festival? And I'm like, oh, oh, wow, yes. And then I started the first festival in Europe. Okay. And then Rotterdam happened a few months later, and then my festival life started from there. Yeah. So I was wow. there from the beginning, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love your CD with Susanna Montero. Montero. Okay. Yeah, she is my mentor. She is somebody who channeled me a lot. Okay. She mm-hmm. made me never to become big headed, mm-hmm. to stay humble. She okay. gave me good uh, advice. She said, if you have a big head and uh, too much of ego, mm-hmm. your road is very short. But if you stay humble and you talk to everybody and dance with everybody, your road is very long. Mm-hmm. So 20 years later, I'm here. So it was her coaching. She's the one who coached yeah. me to do that. Yeah. Great. It is. It is a beautiful feeling when 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 you take somebody's advice mm-hmm. and you follow it, and you see the reward so many years later. You know. But everybody has some someone like that. Like but the problem know. is, there is always somebody in your life, mm-hmm. but you don't realize you don't take everybody's opinion and follow it. You know. Okay. Like I could say something to you right now, but mm-hmm. you would not necessarily take my advice. Mm-hmm. But I give it to you. Mm-hmm. We always have somebody around us, but we don't really pay attention to the person who's giving it to us. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but she she was a very important person in my life. Yeah. Okay. Um, how did that come up that you got such full classes right now in London? How did that? Right now? Yeah. So um, there's a few things besides salsa that I'm okay at, and one one thing I'm good at is um, forecasting. Mm-hmm. So when uh, COVID finished <laughs> in July, they opened all our classes. I didn't want to start slowly and Mm -hmm. I said, let me just start big, you know. So I had rooms with just a few people Mm -hmm. and I started. So I had like six people in every group and when my room was like big room, I could have 60, 70 people, you know. But I knew if I do it, people will know that I've created a space for them. So then it's August, September, after the summer was over. But they just started coming, you know. Mm-hmm. But everybody else was doing it slowly. They were like, no, let's see how many people will come. Maybe we don't have money for the rent. And that. So I put my money and I just took the big rooms, you know. Okay. So by September, October, everybody was in my place. So people in London were waiting till January, February, and now they're not, they're not find, they're finding it hard to pick up. Okay. So I just forecasted. I took a chance and yeah, it just happens to work out, you know. Great. And people like our atmosphere. I built a community now. Pre-COVID, everybody who was dancing had left. You know, family, children, got fat, left the country, different uh, mm. hobbies. Mm-hmm. So they never came back. Okay. So I, I focus on a new community. So I, fo- I put a lot of effort in raising new people. So now I built a small community right now and they are enjoying very much. And after COVID, everybody realized that, you know, everything could be gone one second. Mm. So now people are learning and dancing with a different attitude right now. So okay, they were enjoying it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I'm enjoying this uh, this development also. Yeah. Um, what is your point um, when it comes to the classes? And we had that already in a conversation before, but you guys didn't hear that. <laughs> um, when you talk about teaching, and uh, most of the people who go to the classes, they always want to learn patterns. Yeah. Patterns every day, every day a new pattern, how do you stand to that or what's your point? So, um, there's three levels here. <clears throat> At a very beginner level, people just want to try something new, something different. So you can't be too serious with them. Mm-hmm. You have to show them that one thing can be done many different ways. Mm-hmm. So their eyes are like, wow, I want to learn all those different things. Magic. Yes. <laughs> the middle class. Everybody wants to go out just to have fun, be with their friends, and part of a new community. So they want some material to play with. Mm -hmm. So you give them some material to play with. In the advanced level, these are people who dance often regularly with good people. And so there you have to train technique. So I don't give them too much patterns, Mm -hmm. but I give them something difficult and we work on it repeatedly. We repeat a lot. So you got to play the three different things very differently because you want everybody to mix, mm-hmm. but you don't want people to get bored also. Yeah. So you can't be making them feeling bored doing the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. 
So the trick is very simple. If you want somebody to do something over and over again, you got to show them that they can't do something. So maybe they can do the pattern, so it make the music faster. Mm -hmm. So okay. now they struggle to do it to that music. <laughs> okay. So when they get to that part, when they're able to do that part of the music, I make it even faster. Yeah, so so I'm fair. always making them feel <laughs> yeah. that you got to repeat it again. So it's my little experiment that I have with my students. You know. uh -huh. But I don't make anybody bored. I try not to keep people bored in class. Mm -hmm. I always have something for them to and you, you said something very nice about ladies and men. What do we have ladies to, or what do they need to learn, and what does, or what does a man need to learn? Something with patience and something with what did you say? Ah, okay. <laughs> so basically, mean? when a new person comes to my class that I've never trained from the beginners, mm -hmm. I like to train people from the bottom. Mm -hmm. These are my students. They learn my technique, my language, my jokes, my so they know Mario inside out. But when you get people coming from different different schools or different countries yeah. or whatever. I don't know what kind of technique they have in them. Mm -hmm. I can't just say, okay, because you're advanced in Billafield that you'll be advanced in London. Mm -hmm. Or because you're advanced in Japan, you can be advanced in... So I always assess them. Mm -hmm. So if it's a girl, um, I always assess them. And I would always put a girl in one class above where she should be. Mm -hmm. So that way she learns, she doesn't get bored. She's learning yeah. new things our way. Mm -hmm. And then she will be focused on learning it, learning it, learning it more often. But if a guy comes from a different country or a different school, I always put him one class below because mm -hmm. I want guys to understand patience. Because yeah. when you're learning with me, you need a lot of patience because I, I teach everything correctly. Mm -hmm. So if you are, say, an intermediate student, mm -hmm. uh, a boy, I will put you the one below intermediate, like the improver class. So then I will teach you how to be patient and develop yourself better. But what did you do with a couple? If a couple comes and wants to dance together, how would you do that then? Then I will go, because normally the girl gives in to the boy. Uh -huh. okay. So the girl will go where the boy is. Okay. Yeah, I always try to separate them. Mm -hmm. But if the girl tells me, like, no, I want to stay with him, then she has to go down right. to where he is, because that's a choice she made. Okay, so she is Yeah, I, I wouldn't put the boy where she is. Yeah, so she is bored. It's her, it's her choice. But she's the choice that she's making, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That the boy needs to uh, learn. He to needs to learn patience yeah. no matter where. Yeah. So you guys want to see us dancing? <laughs> Seriously? It would be fun, right? <laughs> really? Yeah. You didn't tell me that. <laughs>